So in terms of your own belief, were you always religious or did you come to religion? I was introduced to religion at an early age, uh, going to like, uh, the Boys Brigade, etc. The what, sorry? The Boys Brigade. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, so that was part and parcel of It's like a Christian Boy Scout? Yes. Right. So that's part and parcel of being in the Boys Brigade, attending church services, etc. The discipline involved in Christianity marry that into the almost militaristic aspect of the Boys Brigade. Okay. And you continued that belief until your, your or did you go through an age of doubt or anything like this? Of course. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. You kind of lose your way, uh, as a lot of boys and girls do, I'm sure. Not yeah. all, but I'm sure a lot. Sure. Uh, and then I, I like to consider myself more spiritual than religious, actually. Right. Due to the fact that I do attend various churches. Right. And I, I, I respect all belief systems. Right. Uh, so. When you nail yourself to one part of the fun, uh, like Christianity, yeah, I'm more in tune with Christianity. Right. Uh, Is that because of your heritage? No, no, no. Okay. No, no, no. But there's, there's aspects of uh, Islam which are very in tune with my lifestyle okay. and my belief system. I have read the Quran some time ago, but uh, I still hold the knowledge within that. And uh, okay. there is aspects of Islam which is very, very in tune with my own lifestyle choices, which is the, the food choices, the discipline and the lifestyle, mm. uh, but just the whole belief system. Okay, yeah, that's and, interesting. And Islam is a very peaceful religion. Mm. Now, I know there's been issues to do with the Middle East, etc. But that's bad people bastardising yeah. Islam to their own ends. Now, that happens not just with Islam, yeah. but it's happened with Christianity throughout the history. Yeah. So it's not... Uh, me just saying that about Islam. Yeah. Now, I'm all about spreading that word about Islam being a peaceful religion. And okay. I'm, very, I'm not shy to tell folk, yeah, I attend central mosques. Okay. Usually Christians actually say that too. Okay. Because some folk are taken aback by that because you could be saying that in a church. Yeah. You're like, well, why are you standing here if yeah. you were there last week? And that's why I just say, I respect your religion. And when it comes to your belief in God, yes. what do you believe about God? Like, you believe God to be obviously beyond space and time, nothing like a human. Correct. Yeah. yeah. But what do you believe about God? It's an entity. It's not a physical being. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a higher power. It's hard to put into words, actually. It is, yeah. Uh, yeah very difficult. Very difficult. And sometimes you're better not Le to put these yeah, things into yeah, yeah, words. Yeah. And this is where faith comes into it, yeah? Yeah. So, it's like for a child, Santa Claus. A Father Christmas, I should say, right? It's very visual. Which is very visual, but children need to be stimulated visually, whereas when you've got a deep uh, spiritual belief system, you don't have to have the visual. Uh, but again, this is where the faith comes into yeah. it, because you don't need it in front of you. And again, this is a test of your own faith. Yeah, yeah. And I'm glad, I'm glad you put it that way, because some people, they try and really comprehend God uh, beyond what's comprehensible. Yeah. And then they get lost, you know. I've had this discussion before with those who are very much doubters, who have, they have no belief system, and they say, well, where's your proof? Yeah. Where, where did you see this? Uh, look at this in the Bible. How can this be true? And that be true? Like, they see trying to explain faith to someone who has none. Yeah. There's a stubborn element that creeps in to someone you're talking to who you know, has that zero belief system. Yeah. Uh, because they dig the heels in yeah. and refuse to accept the whole concept of faith. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes as well, the discussions tend to tend towards um, propositional arguments about God as opposed to the benefits yeah. to believing in God. Correct, very true. Yeah. The, the doubters out there would say, this isn't true, that isn't true. Uh, where's your belief for this, where's your belief for that? What good is this done, what good is that done? It's behind every war known to man. Yeah. People are people. That's man's decision. Yeah. It wasn't the religion that guided man yeah. to, to implement that as a, a weapon yeah. against fellow man. Yeah. And not only that, uh, Graham, right? Yes. Um, the Soviet Union, uh -huh. they didn't have religion. Correct. But they were the most uh, violent yeah, state. An orthodox, uh, very small orthodox church, I believe, within yeah. uh, uh, Russia. Yeah. yeah. So overall, whether it's Chairman Mao, um, current liberal order uh -huh. you know human beings commit violence yeah. so it's not that you can always uh, just say it's because of god or religion but uh, going back to god 
So are you aware of what Muslims believe about Jesus when it comes to yeah, our well, theological God, sort of difference? Well, God did not have, according to Islam, God did not have a son. Mm. That's the Prophet Muhammad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one of the things the Quran emphasizes is that it's a continuation of the old messages. Uh -huh. So we have, you know, all the old prophets. We have Abraham and Noah and Moses and Jesus and so Joseph and so on and so forth. Um, and they all came with the one very simple message, which is none is worthy of worship except God. Uh -huh. So the fundamental message of Islam is not difficult yeah. to understand. Well, because in Islam, you're, you're, not, um, you're not following a human being, which we're, this is the difference between Christianity and Islam. Correct yeah. me if I'm wrong, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, uh, Islam is about God. Yeah. God is a, the soul belief. Yeah. Right? Whereas in Christianity, you have Jesus yeah. as the Son of God right. rather than a prophet. So, about the Son of God, do you believe him to be a metaphorical son or like a literal son of God? Oh, that's open to interpretation, yeah. Now, do I believe there was a Jesus as a human being? Uh, a historical person? Yeah. Of course. Yes, of course I do, yeah. 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 Was he the son of God? Well, if you're to believe what was uh, written in the texts, right. uh, then certainly uh, there had to be something there. So, when it comes to God, mm -hmm. God doesn't need to eat or drink or, you know, do any of those things. Yeah. And when we look at Jesus or his mother Mary, you know, they slept because they were tired, yeah. they ate, they drank. Um, and Jesus himself always said to worship God. So in the Quran, uh, you know, you said you read it. Oh, what, quite some time ago. I yeah, don't profess to know. Yeah, no, of course, of course. And, you, you know, obviously um, uh, when you're reading, you can sometimes certain points aren't emphasized. But one of the things it mentions in the Quran again and again is that rationally, Jesus cannot be God because God is um, all powerful and free of need, but Jesus had limitations, right? Yeah. And also that Jesus said to worship God, and that was his thing. Um, even historically, what's interesting is that there were early Christian sects that believed what I believe. They believed that Jesus was not God, not the Son of God, and that he was a messenger of God. Yeah. Um, there's actually a very interesting talk online by um, a academic called Dr. Gerald Dirks. And he has this talk on Islamic trajectories in early Christianity. And what he does is he historically looks at it and he shows that what Muslims believe today about Jesus was believed by certain Christians in the past. So it's not like all Christians believed he was God and then Muslims came 600 years later and said, no, he's not. Um, so the fundamental thing in Islam is that to have salvation, you have to have the correct theology. Um, it's not enough to um, you know, to be a good person in terms of your manners or how you are, but your theology about God, uh, we shouldn't say God has a son. I mean, did you ever think about this as you're reading the Quran? Um, to be honest and to be fair, I try not to compare the two. When, 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 I, was, like when, I, when I did read the Quran, I try not to compare it to outside religion. Right. I try to absorb the message in the Quran for what it is, right. rather than do a comparison. Okay. But don't you think, Graham, that if you, for example, if you pass away yeah. and you go to God, um, and God could ask you that, you know, you came across other philosophies, religions, and I gave you a mind. I gave you a rational mind you to... You made the wrong choice. Yeah, as in God will say, I gave you a gift of this, this amazing biological system, um, which can help us come to truth because God wouldn't want us to blindly follow any religion. You know, if we cross the road, we're going to use our mind. Um, oh, thank you. Would you have some water? I'm good enough. Are you sure? You. Yes, of okay. course. So, yeah, yeah, thank you very much. So, God wants us to be rational. Yep. And the thing about Jesus being God is that it's not something that you can rationally justify, which is why early Christian theologians, they stopped trying to rationalize it because it was very hard for them to do. But the Quran tells you something which Abraham, Moses, and Noah, they all said, which is there's only one God. And the idea of a man being God, Jesus being God, this is even alien to the, the chronology 
throughout history of God sending messengers, you know. Sorry, is that your major point? Yeah, I mean, the, the point I was trying to make is basically that all throughout history you have the same message from God, you know, to the Israelites, uh, to the people of Noah, to the people uh, during the time of Adam, uh, the, the people after him. And then with Jesus, we have a message uh, with, with what today's Christians say, something which is totally alien to the past. But some, if, I mean, if we, look, if we look at it in this order that we have Noah saying one God, worship him alone, God doesn't have a son, you know. Uh, the, this is Old Testament with Noah, in the New Testament, Jesus is one, uh, working words. Uh, there's a difference there, yeah, you have the Old Testament and the New Testament now. What I did notice is, the Christian Bible, New Testament, and the word in the Quran, are very, very similar. Right. The messages within it and the stories within it are very, very similar indeed. Yeah. A, lot, no, a lot of folk maybe don't realise that. No. But it's like um, the character of God is God, Muhammad is Muhammad, Jesus is Jesus, but they're very similar in their messages. Both Jesus, Muhammad, and God, of course. Yeah. Very similar indeed. Yeah. And with the similarity, the, the the thing that we'll notice is that when it says in the Quran or the Bible uh -huh. that Jesus raised the dead, Jesus um, made the blind see, he healed the, lep uh, the, the leper. Now, that could be interpreted in the physical sense, or theoretically, or not theoretically, but uh, in a spiritual sense, the blind not being able to see. I mean, people walk around with two very good eyes in their head, but they're still blind. You see it from that, yeah, that that can, that can be there. However, what we do know is that Jesus did miracles from the historical perspective. So obviously, like Moses parted the sea. So we have these physical miracles. Now the Quran makes one addition to these miracles. It says, by God's permission. So Jesus raised the dead by God's permission. Jesus healed the leper by God's permission. So that's the emphasis in Islam that don't take him beyond a man. You know, don't go beyond that. Because at the end of the day, I want you to go to paradise. I want to go to paradise. I want everyone to go to paradise. And the message it says in the Quran is that if you believe Jesus to be divine, to be the son of God, this is blasphemy. And that the Quran says those people won't go to paradise. Which is why what we try and do is we try and give the message of Islam. And even though it's uncomfortable sometimes to talk to a person of the op opposite faith and say, um, your theology is uh, incorrect. It's a very uncomfortable conversation, but ultimately it's our duty to convey that. But the thing is, if you're a true believer in your religion, you should be open to other people's interpretation of their faith system. Yeah. Yeah, because that's part and parcel of being a human being, humanity and your, your faith uh, and the word of God indeed. And you have to be open to other people's interpretation and belief systems. Yeah. Because we're not all born the same, we're not all made the same. Yeah. So you should be able to converse and argue, not argue, but discuss your point okay. with fellow man. Yeah. And even if we disagree, we can at least convey to each other sure. each other's things. I actually have a booklet in my jacket. I'm, if you don't mind, I can give it to you. Love, Love of God. God. Yeah. yeah I'll just, if you just come over. Five minutes. So, this is the first thing about love of God. So, this is just about, I mean, one way of putting it is. If you have a really heavy meal, you come from home, you have a heavy meal, and someone comes and offers you some food, water, whatever, you're like, I don't need anything, I'm full. I understand it. Yeah. Yeah. Analogy. Yeah. So when we're filled with the love of God, we don't need validation from people. We don't need anything else, right? I mean, if we walk down this uh, park lane, all we see is competition. You know, people are trying to compete each other with wealth and how they look and True peace comes when we have love of God in our hearts. So this is a very good booklet for that. Yeah. 
And I want to give you a copy of the Quran. Do you know, I have one of these already. Oh, you have it, okay. It's at home, and I'm not at home at present. Excellent. So, it's Sunday, and not necessarily for the but I like to dedicate my Sundays to religion, so right, that's okay. a good reading for tonight. Okay, good. I, I, I'll explain to you um, where you could begin. So, okay. the Quran is broken into these chapters, and there's actually... Trying to find which would be. So this is chapter three, and this is page forty-five. Ali Imran. So the family of Imran. So read that chapter. I will. It will go over what we believe about Jesus, um, and you know, just. I mean, I'm trying to explain to the best of my ability what we believe and why we believe. But there's nothing better than reading it for yourself and thinking about it. Yeah. yeah? And at the back of this material, there's an email address. Um, yeah. So if you go to this website, you can uh, email and it actually comes through to our organization. You, we, we could speak to you. Yeah? It's really nice speaking to you, Graham. Always speaking to you. Bro. Have a lovely day. You too, my friend. Thank you so much. God bless.